Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Welcome to the next instalment of How to Build a Warp Weighted Loom. Now, if you've been following from the beginning, we started off by collecting the wood for our loom from coppiced um, woodlands. We've um, sized and cut and trimmed and shaped and assembled our looms. Two looms in progress. This is the child size version. There's a bigger one also still being tweaked a little bit. We've warped up our loom with a test warp, which has got its own problems, but they're fine. We've left those little quirks because, well, they're going to help us see what we need to change when we warp things up for a really good finished piece of cloth. And now the moment of truth, we're ready to try weaving. So what we're going to be doing in this video is working out how to get the sheds that we set up last week to capture our weft yarn in a way that gives us a fabric that's worth using. I am not expecting miracles today. When we set this up, we identified several issues um, that would need correcting in a final piece. One of which was that um, we've got very, very heavy weights on our warp threads. So I think we're going to end up with a very, very tight warp, which is going to affect how the weft thread lies into it. Uh, the other one is that because, again, part of the, weft, the weight of the weft has meant that our starting border is really being pulled against this beam at the top. So our first few rows are going to be quite interesting. We've also got a very, very widely spaced warp. Now we did that deliberately because we wanted you to see how everything was setting up, but it is going to mean we've got a very, very wide spacing. There's only a very few threads per centimetre, only five or six threads a centimetre here. And generally that's a little bit too few for a really balanced textile. I'm not worried about that. Sometimes we learn more by seeing things that aren't quite perfect so that we can see what to do in the next one. So without further ado, the next thing I need to do is to set up my yarn to get it into a form where I can get it through the shed. Now you can of course just wind yarn into a ball or wrap it on a shuttle or around a piece of cardboard or make it into a little butterfly shape to get it through. But there is a way of using a slightly bigger quantity of yarn without getting too tangled. And you start by winding it around your hand a few times. Again, the exact number is not important just a few times to give you a good stable starting point. Take it off, wind the yarn round the head. I always think of this as being making like making a little dolly. When you've got enough that you can hold easily, you're going to take a longer piece. Again, the exact yarn is a matter of preference. I'm going to keep mine quite short so you can see what's going on. Fold it back up, take a few more turns round. Take another loop. Again, roughly the same length, don't overthink it few more turns. So each time you're having a tail that's secured by a few twists. And you can build this up to be quite large. Now we're using singles, so they've got a tendency to twist back on themselves. That's not actually a problem here. When you think you've got enough, snap the end off. Now in use, you're just going to unwind this in the opposite direction. So there's our tail end. If I undo that, one tail comes away. I'll weave that bit and then you unwind that. The next tail, um, next tail comes away. These little bundles, little yarn dollies, they are really, really useful for this type of work. So it's worth baking up two or three of those before you start weaving. We're also going to need some tools. Now you can use your fingers. You can use a fork, which is a good idea. I'll go and get one in a second. But the classic tool for the warp weighted loom to help you get everything into place is a weaving saw. Now Gareth has just made me a brand new one. I haven't used this one at all yet. This one's quite light, it's oak, so it's quite stiff, even though it's thin. And the important thing is that it's very smooth. Now the idea with this is that as we weave, this gets inserted into the warp and you use it to beat the threads upwards. So I'm going to get a fork because that's useful in the first stage and we'll try 
this out. So as with all the last few videos, I'm going to film each stage several times from different angles. And the first thing we're going to do is take our first twist of yarn, find the first end, unwind a bit, and I'm just going to pass that through the shed. Now this is the very, very first row in, and in an ideal world, if I got my tensions right and it was all lashed on tidily, I'd have a perfectly smooth area to put it up against. But I think even with the camera a bit further away, you can see that this is just lying slightly underneath. So, table fork, and we're just gonna pat this first row up, trying to get a good compromise between even and close to the top, but also flat. We really want it to be quite flat along the top. So make sure that's safely out of the way. Double check that we haven't got anything hiding that shouldn't be there. Just get a feeling I might have missed one somewhere. I might have a warp thread in the wrong place there. We'll find out about that in a moment. Again, this is what a test warp's for, to show us whether things are working. And then, oh, I've also got this squeaky chair, I might change that for the next take as well. I'm going to change the shed. So, grasp the heddle bar, pull it smoothly forwards. Oh, that's my wobbly top again. That's the other thing I'm going to change. I was talking about that last time. I need some notches in the bars here to stop things wriggling. Again, that's fine. In this case, I'm going to start just by popping my hand in, making sure it's open. Then, weaving sword goes in. Pat everything up and into place. Grab your yarn dolly. Check you've got enough on it. Pull the thread through. Now, it's very, very important you don't pull it too tightly. What we want to do is make sure we leave a little bit of a loop at the end. Again, I'm going to use my fork again at this stage. I can already see that I've got some potential errors in my warp threading here, where I've crossed them over when I added the loom weights. Again, I'm not going to worry about it for this case. I'm going to change the shed. The weight of the weights has pulled everything backwards, check it's open, pop the sword through, beat it into place. Now I'm hoping for a relatively balanced fabric here. So because my warp threads are quite a long way apart, my weft threads are going to be a certain way apart as well. I'm going to move the camera, change the squeaky chair and we'll try and do some close-ups. I did debate when I was planning this one whether I should start with a completely fresh warp that I'd sorted out all the issues with, but actually that doesn't help me and it doesn't help you, particularly if you're new to this. Let's do a few more and see what happens. So I'm leaving a little bit of a gap at the end. I'm going to get my fork. There are weaving combs known for the archaeological record, but there's also plenty of periods of time where we just don't know what they're using. So, improvising is fine. Now what should be happening, as we get the first few rows in, is that the warp threads should be sorting themselves out and the spacing should be setting itself. I think it's going to take a little while before we see this. Change the shed again. Get the weaving sword. Beat into place, have a look at what we've done. Now, that little loop at the end is still showing, so I probably could go a little tighter on the next round, not too much so. Bring my yarn through, let's move that out of the way. Bring it up into place. With a tight, open work warp like this the temptation is going to be for the work to narrow in because it wants to be a more a more closely made fabric we're not going to worry about that too much 
So this time I've deliberately left that sitting quite low down so you can see what happens. And the weaving sword is bringing everything up. Oops, that was a pair of scissors going flying. Now this time I've changed the shed without making sure this was properly at the top. So that's okay, we can leave a loop. In fact, some weavers do work in loops. If you do find yourself with a loop, try and pat it into place evenly and you'll soon see whether you need to pull a little bit up at the end or whether you're pretty much okay. And actually, that's not bad, a little bit of adjustment there. Now the plan with this series of videos is that this child size loom has been very much the, the test run. Oh, and no, something didn't change properly there. Do make sure when you change your shed that everything does move. What I think has happened there, this end is being a little softer. I think my loom weight is touching the floor there. So I'll sort that out in a moment. Oh, so yes, so the plan with this series of videos is that this child size loom we put together, particularly on the warp in front, in quite a quick and dirty way. I haven't, oh look, that's what I get for talking too much. Uh, we didn't um, think too hard about what was going on because I wanted you to see what happens when it's not perfect. What I've done there is I'd gone all the way across, I'd beaten it up, and then I hadn't changed the shed. So now it's gonna just pull back out again. You'll soon see if you're doing it wrong. You know, it is fairly intuitive, this. That's all right, we'll just put it back the way it should be. So, thread goes in, pulled up, but not tight. Change the shed. Check that my slightly silly loom weight that sunk is where it should be. Use the weaving sword to beat things into place. Now I'm starting to see that some of this is looking quite good, some of this is looking not so good. I've got a really nice bit there, there's a really nice bit there, there's a big gap there, there's a big gap there. We'll see how it evens up over a few rounds and um, I think what I'll do is I'll just carry on with that. I'll do one more just to remind you what's going on. So we've changed the shed, we've beaten up the warp. Thread goes back over, change the shed, make sure it's behaving itself. Beat up there, too big a loop at the end. If I need to ideally tighten that up. If I just pull on that, that's probably going to snap off. So I think that's going to be the way to do it. Ease that across. Beat up. Now this is a very small piece of weaving, so there's nothing really to put resistance on it. If it was a big bit, you'd really be putting some effort, some real muscle into changing all the sheds. So just to remind you what's happening when I change sheds, we'll move the camera back. So all I've done is I've angled the camera down to exactly where we left off a second ago. So cross the heddle rod, move it forwards. Those thread heddles that we made in a previous video, open up the shed. Weaving sword goes in. If you want to do it for the other way so my arm isn't in your way. Doesn't really matter whether you work left or right handed. Beat things up. Weaving sword comes down and out. I know you can't see this on the camera, but the thread has been passed back through. And then we change sheds again. So those thread heddles are allowing the weights to pull that particular shed to the back. Those are my floppy ones that I need to adjust. All I need to do is untie that loom weight and move it up. Beat that up. I'm going to do a few more passes and then we'll see how we're looking.
So I've changed colours now. I've gone on to the brown, which was the next colour in our warp thread. So I'm doing the same pattern coming down the other way. And I have to say, I'm feeling happier about this already. We're starting to get quite a nice weave coming through. It's actually more even than I suspected it was going to be. So I'm pleased about that. I had truly thought I had far too much weight on the warp threads for this particular batch. But just goes to show that sometimes you just need to run with things and see what happens. It's a bit awkward this because I'm trying to lean around the camera. So I'm still overdoing my loops at the ends. I'm so conscious that I don't want this to pull in that I'm being a little too careful. But the general sequence of work is coming on quite nicely. It's three steps. Pass your thread through. Bring it up into place, making sure that you've got a little bit of a loop there, a little bit of a loop on the end. You can either let it drop or you can hang it over the bar. Change your shed. Now I'm not needing my fork at all now, I'm just using the weaving sword to beat that into place. And the flat-ish edge is plenty to knock that up. And I'm getting a relatively balanced weave, which I'm pleased about. So that's three stages. We'll do it again. Yarn goes through in the opposite direction this time. Watch out for my little end loops. But a little bit of a loop there is fine. Change the shed. Put the weaving sword in. Beat it into place. My slight irregularities in the warp have more or less evened out now. You can see at the top here that there were some quite big gaps to start with, but as the cloth is starting to take shape, those are resolving themselves. And you'll get more um, resolution of that when we do the finishing later on. For now though, I'm gonna keep weaving and I will come back to you when I've done probably several more rounds of color change so that we can see what happens when we need to, oops, crashing into things, when we need to move up the warp on the beam. So far, so good. Quick close up before I get any further. So our problem areas are quite clearly the header band. It's not lashed tightly. In fact, a lot of beams actually have holes in them so you can sew it into place. And that means that we're getting little swags there, our first rows uneven. In this case, that's fine. This is a learning thing. I would far rather you see what not to do than it goes perfectly and you don't know what to watch out for. My warp is quite gappy here. It really does want to pull in a bit more. I might have to give in and just let it pull in just a smidgen. This bit though, this is looking really nice. That's quite a balanced weave. Even though it's airy, I can see through it. I'm quite pleased with that bit. So in principle, as a test warp, I'm happy about this. I can see that I would want to use a few more warp threads per weight when I do um, the big loom. I definitely need to put more warp threads into my header band. Uh, other than that, so far so good. We'll do a bit more and come back to it. I've very nearly finished weaving as much as I can fit onto this particular section of warp. You'll see as I put this next piece in, so I put the thread through, change a shed, hit the camera, knock everything skew off. You'll see that it's starting now to get a little bit tricky to make space to get the weaving sword in. So what I really need to do is start thinking about rolling the entire lot off. Let's see if I can retry the other side and do this. That's a bit better. So a couple more lines of weft just to finish this colour. And we'll have a good look at what we've got. One more and I think that should do it. So what we're finding at the moment with this particular um, 
test warp is that it's pulled in quite a lot. We'll have a closer look in a moment. Um, but it's stabilised. And uh, for the settling down it's done now, what's working is just the smallest amount of curve in the weft thread. So no big, huge, loopy bubble of it, just a little bit of a curve. Change the shed. Beat it up. Now if we have a close look at what we've done, starting at the top, where we had our really, really very sad looking header band. Well, we'll do better next time. I thought we were getting away with this really open spacing here, but I should have known better really. It wants to be a much more tightly woven fabric and it's settled in now near the bottom into something much more of this grist. Now, if you recall, when we were setting up the header band, we were putting single threads in, but we were talking about how actually it's often better with double. If I'd gone for the double, we'd have gone straight to this point. So note to myself, when I set up the next one on the big loom, definitely use double threads. I knew that. Now, once I decided to allow it to narrow in, it did stabilise, but we have got really, really open selvages. That's quite normal. Uh, you can improve on it. If I put a couple of double threads down the side, I'd have ended up with a half basket weave and that would have helped things a little bit. The other thing on a big weave that can help is putting pins in the side and physically tying this to the side of the loom. That can make a little bit of a difference. But for the moment, this is a test weave. It's telling me what this particular loom this particular yarn, this particular set of weights likes, I'll learn from that. This is not going to get a waste, even though this is a bit wibbly wobbly and it's all a bit strange. I'll finish weaving it. When I get to the bottom and take it off, once it's washed, that will fluff up a bit. But what I'm planning on doing is turning this good section into probably a bag. And by the time it's sewn up, that bit will be in the seams at the side and it's going to look loads better. So what we need to do now is take off the loom weights. Oh, there's a cat under here again. Hello cat. Um, <laughs> take off the loom weights and then we are going to uh, come all the way up to the top. I'm going to roll the bar up, slide the heddles along I reattach the loom weight. See, I said there was a cat. That's Tesla. It is. There's always a cat underfoot with weaving, and we shall reattach it. And I'm going to try and do this whilst filming at the same time with the cat in the way. This could be fun. All right, taking off the loom weight. So, what you should find is that these should just pull out. Take your front ones off first because this is sloped backwards. If it becomes unstable, it'll push itself towards the back, not towards the front. So just untie your loom weights. If you chained up the ends, yeah, it's not for you, cat. <laughs> that will just pull back quite neatly. And then we'll unpop. Same here. Just ping that back. Good, the cat's moving off. Just drop those off. You don't have to unthread them because it will be tying them straight back up again. I'll do exactly the same at the back, then we'll move up a bit. We're loose at the bottom now. The next thing to do is just pat your fingers down through the chain. Make sure that's running smoothly. You don't want that to get all snarled up. Same at the back. You will have to adjust again in a minute, but that just gets things out of the way. Shouldn't be any problems there for the moment. So now it's about rolling up onto the beam. Now my particular loom has got a peg on the side which will lock against this. So for the moment, and again I'm doing this one-handed, two hands is better, lift up your beam, roll it up. I'm only gonna get so far with this because of my hands and one-handedness. Okay, when you get to a point where you think you can manage, you drop it back into the notches. 
and you should find that now this is locked against the side. If you've got a slidey peg, make sure it doesn't drop out. That should be fine. And now this is wound up onto the top. I'm actually going to wind up a little bit further. But looking down, the heddles have slipped up. So just very, very gently ease them down. Take your time about it. What you don't want is to make the yarn go fluffy through abrasion. So always do things like this quite slowly. Take your time with it. And check the chaining. Just use your fingers to wiggle that down if you need to. Oh, one-handed is not the way to do this. Now, I'm going to put the camera down. I'm going to tidy this up. I'm going to put all the weights back on. And then we'll have a little look at what stage we've got to. So the weights are tied back on. The chain is back in place. The heddles are back in place. The warp is rolled onto the beam, not quite as straight as I would have liked ideally, but it'll do for now. And we have got a fresh section here that we can continue working on. Now this is probably going to be the last clip on this particular video. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to keep working on this. I'm also going to be finishing the next loom. That's the adult size one. And I'm going to be putting into play all of the different things that we found out and taught ourselves as we set this one up. So I now know what this particular yarn and set of weights like, how they play nicely together. I'll be putting that into play on the next one. So the next video will be a recap. I'm not going to do everything in huge detail. We'll have a minute or two on the structure of the loom, a minute or two on setting up the um, um, tablet woven border, that's the word, um, and getting the warp set up. We'll have just a minute or two on putting in the string heddles. Cat, will you stop scratching? We'll have just a moment or two on the weights and a quick refresher on the weaving. And in one video, hopefully, we'll pull this all together and you'll get an overview of how it should look rather than the things we found out as we went along as to what works and what doesn't. Happy weaving and I'll see you in the next one.